welcome back to another video here of db fishing we are almost at the end of ice fishing season it's about mid-march here and yeah some of you down in the states are already out on your boats i see but uh here in saskatchewan canada we still got about two feet of ice so we're still going to be giving her i gotta be fishing here till the end of march around home and then going up uh, north manitoba for some lake trout and stuff in april so still a little bit of ice fishing for me left. Uh, perfect time here uh for pike uh march call it, some people call it march madness pike start moving in shallow and really start start bulking up here for the springtime so yeah when it gets cold in the winter they start usually moving out a little deeper and stuff and now is the time that they're going to start coming into some flowing water and bays now is a good time to get on the flags the tip up so we're going to go over uh, kind of what i run and see how we do today um it's kind of overcast and now the sun's popping up and it's going back behind clouds so we'll see it's uh about 11 o'clock here right now a little later getting out so we're gonna go uh all afternoon stay tuned let's see how we do let's get rolling and drill some holes live well and set up our tip ups okay so just gonna talk a little bit about what we're using here today hopefully you guys can hear me got a dog freaking out behind me here on shore but yeah this is the original uh, HT Enterprise Original Ice Rigger. I've used it in a lot of other videos. I like these ones. They're pretty simple. Basically, you hook your line onto this little uh, cl clamp and keep your bail open. And when the line pulls out, flag comes up. Pretty simple to set up. And then I'm going to be pairing it with the Blue Tips. Um, this is the Deep Freeze Blue Tips Mobile um, Tip Up Alarm. It's got a light on it. And then you Bluetooth it to your phone on the app. When it tips up, it uh, alarms, sends an alarm to your phone. So pretty awesome. It goes a long distance, and all it does is just um, clip onto the base, oh, other way, base of your flags like that. So when it tips up, it'll alarm to your phone. So yeah, that's what we're going with on the rod. This is a heavy, uh, 43 inch, 20 pound braid, and then. All I've been using lately, I don't know if you can see that, a little barrel swivel. And then I tie 80 pound fluorocarbon, about a foot, foot and a half liter, to just a single treble. I like one. Uh, that way you don't gut hook the fish or get a hook in the hand. This is a number two size treble. Usually I like Cisco, but right now they've been kind of hard to get around here. And just take a big herring. And then uh, I made an example here. I'll show you how I'm going to do it. But I sliced them, the belly, and then I fill them with some scent. Today we got smelly Just jelly. Hook it into the back here slightly. These are all thawed out. Make sure they're not froze. Just so it sits level. And that's going to go down the hole. We're going to soak that in one hole. And then the other tip up we're going to use is just your typical insulated. This is an HT Enterprise, uh, I believe it's the Predator Pro tip up. And yeah, probably seen these before. So yeah, basically it just hooks on like so. And then when the fish pulls the line, it'll uh, pop the flag up as well. Pretty simple. These are pretty standard, what a lot of guys use. And then I got uh, just some tip up line on here. I believe this is like 40, 50 pound. This way it's just easier on your hands, this tip up line. And then I got it, same thing, tied to a little barrel swivel to about 80 pound fluorocarbon. And then that single treble too. Works good. The single treble, I find it's just as many hookups with it. But yeah, it's just a thing. You don't get another that side hook in the hand or anything. And also those pike, it's a little easier on them. It hasn't broke on me yet. I was up to like 50. I've had some issues breaking off on that. But yeah, this 80's been pretty good the last, started using it last year, got it in Hawaii, and yeah, it's been pretty good. I like it. I just don't like having a bunch of extra stuff there. This is the most natural look. Fluorocarbon's super clear in water, and then you just have that treble. So yeah, let me just take our herring or your bait. Cisco is the best around here. This is what probably their natural forages, suckers. Um, but yeah, we got these herrings. They're about 10 inches. I'm just 
making some slices with a knife to get some scent out of there. Some slush on these. And then what I'm trying lately is some of this smelly jelly. This is the herring anise scent. And I'm just injecting, if you can see, those slots. I'm just putting, pumping some scent, the smelly jelly in around it. Try something different and get some scent going down there. Drop that down to our depth. We're in about six and a half, seven feet of water. So I'm gonna run it about kind of that mid column, that four feet. I don't know if you guys can see on the live scope today. It's pretty glary outside. A lot of glare, so I might not see it right about there. So yeah, we just hooked this to the clamp after we got our depth set. And leave our bale open. I don't know if you can see on the live scope, but yeah, it's just under four feet there. And we'll see if anything comes in. We're and this is the same way, single treble on this hand over hand style insulated tip up. Just clip it in there just so it's centered. Just like so, or level I should say, centered. Let's go set. So this is a little deeper but where you have a bunch of different other holes drilled in different depths. So I want to just try this out. 11 feet and I'll probably set it anywhere from that six to eight foot depth. Kind of that mid, mid area. And if uh, that doesn't work, then we'll maybe move it to like lower, maybe two feet off bottom type thing. But yeah, you can always just play around, see what's working. Try different things, different depths, different little areas. But yeah, this spot we have a little bit of flowing water just to the south of us, a little creek that comes in. Once we're on bottom, we're just gonna get do it rough. Like I said, we're bringing the uh, flasher out to double check, but I wanna set this kind of mid column so we'll come up somewhere in there for now. And then this is insulated and it just covers that 10 inch hole perfectly. And then there's two different sensitivities. We're gonna set it sensitive, like so. There, two tip ups are ready to go. Now let's go drill a live well and get some cameras and some other things set up. Get the live scope maybe watching one of these tip ups, see what comes along. Let me just drill a boat. Drill about five or six holes side by side. Yeah, so five or six holes side by side, do them about halfway down, just so you don't break through the water. And drill one, one off the end, so that we'll go right through with that one. Fill this with water. And just get some water. Once we clean this out, we'll just fill it all up with this water. We did six holes and then one knot attached and went right through with that one. The other ones we just went halfway down. Now we're gonna clean this out and then with the drill just reverse and spin up a bunch of water and fill up these six half holes and they'll have a little live well. Works good for pike or walleye and uh, that way you can take your time, get them in the live well, let them settle down get a picture or a good release.
Come on, Pike. Oh, there's a Pike. There's a Pike. There's a Pike. Please tell me we're recording. Yep. Take it, take it, take it. We got the Mario theme. On the blue tip is going. Oh, that is annoying. Okay, he's running. Everything worked there and we got it on the live scope, this one. Let him run. Just gonna record. I don't know how good you guys are gonna see this on the live scope. Because of the... Because of the um, glare from the sun. Okay, I'm still taking it. Like I said, I want to let him run. There he's stopping. Okay, we're gonna hit this guy. Check your drag. Good. Yep. <sighs> this thing. Oh, lost him. Lost him. I don't think that was very big. I felt a little weight. We gotta go get a bait. He's still there on the live scope. Shoot. Shoot, shoot, shoot. I'm gonna quickly run and grab a bait here. Maybe. Just lost him. We're gonna go with a little smaller bait this time. Oh, there's something. There's a bike, there's a bike, there's a bike. Quiet, everybody. Come on. My head camera's gonna die. Oh my God. Just going by it. Should go give it a little bumper ski. Looks like a bed. Oh. He's all over it. He's all over it. Yep, 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 yep. That's how it's done. Woohoo. So cool. Look at him going down. We're going to let him take it. That might be a better one. It's slowly spinning. Did he drop it? Just the wind going. Now, let's do some better line management on this one. Stopped. I think we're going to hit him. Got him. Uh, nothing huge. Decent one. Stopped, where is he? He's wrapped up, I think. Oh, no, I'm gonna get his head. Oh, yeah, nothing huge. He's definitely wrapped in it, though. And just a side hook. Not too bad. Be easy to get out. We'll take them to the live ball. But yeah, another one. That was pretty cool on the live scope. Okay, well, we'll put him in the live ball. He's not very big, but we got him in the live ball. He was pretty easy to unhook. This live ball is way too big for him. He's not a very big guy. But yeah. Kill him off. He's kind of a chunky little guy. But yeah, another pike on that original tip up in 11 feet of water. So that's kind of the go to. Sun came out here now. Yeah, just over 30 inches, nothing too big, but yeah, the 11 feet of water seems to be the way to go, but let's get him back. He'll be lively. We just brought him to the live hole, then I brought this big main camera over here while he settled down. He's going to kick off and on. So yeah, another, another smaller one.
hand over hand style, the insulated one. So I've been taking our camera, just the head camera, and see if it's spinning or not. Oh yeah, it's spinning. Slow, slow. That's a good sign. This is a big bait. I could have just went to the live well, I guess, but I brought everything. It's still spinning. Once it stops a little bit, I'll probably hit them. Yeah, there. Let them take it. Oh, there's the gloves left. We're gonna hit them. Oh, yeah, not big. Oh, we lost it. <sighs> Lost them. Didn't feel very big. So. Should let them run more. Yeah, I usually like to let them run, and then when he stops, hit him. But. He kind of slowed down, not really full stop. I should have left him a little longer, but we'll set this back up. It felt some weight, but it was not very big. So it probably was a smaller one and just spit the bait. These are uh, a bit bigger baits going for bigger, bigger pikes. So all the small ones might spit them out. Okay, we didn't even make it back to the truck sitting and watching and flag went again so I don't know if oh yeah I know it's spinning same one came back this time we're gonna leave them then we're gonna go back to the truck the live well and uh, measure them there I didn't bring my board and stuff so if we get them uh, we'll go over there to the truck we're sitting back making less noise with our two tip-ups here but yeah, now it's definitely spinning. I don't think it's a big, big one. It's not spinning super fast though, which usually means they're smaller. This is the HT Enterprise Predator Pro insulated tip. Oh, now he's going. There we go. Oh, oh he's still on there. Oh, my line management is brutal. This is brutal line management. It's not very big. I hope he takes a run here. Yep, there, there we go. That feels all right, actually. It's hard to tell. I haven't used these hand over hand ones very much. I don't like them as much as the rod. Oh yeah, it's a good one. Better. There we go, that's a beast. That is a beast. Let's get him to the live well. Okay, he's in the live well here. This worked out pretty good. We got him unhooked, let him regain his energy. We brought him over here. We got the board ready. I had my pliers over here. See so yeah, how it works good, those live wells. Um, he doesn't look very long, but he's a thick one. So we're gonna get him out, give him a measurement, and then get him back. Well guys, I still got the tip-ups out. Uh, we moved them around a couple times there. Um, nothing too crazy today, pretty slow in this spot. Probably should have moved to another spot, but like I said, we're only out for a few hours this afternoon. So I just wanted to go over uh, kind of what I like running the setup. We got the rod set up and 
the hand-over-hand uh, -hand insulated original one. Kind of went over how I make a live well. And then, yeah, we got on a few pike. One pretty decent one there, the 39 and three-quarter half or whatever it was. So uh, not a complete waste of time. But, uh, yeah, I'm probably going to start packing up here and get out for an evening walleye bite. It's about 3, 3 o'clock and uh yeah i want to be over at a different spot for about four there so by the time i pack up and get out of here but uh i don't know if this will be the last ice fishing video or not we'll probably try to get some cameras going for some other stuff here but uh definitely was an interesting season didn't get out as much as i would have liked to just with the uh slow freeze up and stuff around here but it was okay uh numbers wise i was pretty happy but for big fish it just didn't seem to go my way this winter, but uh, definitely uh, the videos were getting a little more watch. So definitely want to thank you guys for watching and tuning in. And uh, if we don't see you on the ice here again for another video, we'll definitely be back out on the boat making videos. So stay tuned and thank you so much for, for everyone who subscribed and watching and uh, definitely more to come. So uh, thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.